Okay, so let's talk about now that we have our page set up. This is part two of the painting, uh, you know, digital painting. We've got our page set up and we went over everything on the right hand side. So let's talk about our left hand side and we're going to go to the, it looks like it's the seventh tool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tool, the paintbrush tool. I've already got it clicked and we can tell that we already have it done because up right up here, you could say it's a paintbrush tool right there, okay? So let's click the little 52, or the, I, I have it set as a 52, or it's a small circle. There's a down arrow, so let's click on there, and you're going to see a really kind of neat, like, little um, display. And the display has a couple more things uh, on, the, on the brushes than it does over on the right-hand side. The right-hand side, we can just pick a brush, which we already can do right through here, as you can see all of our, our nice little um, folders that we had on the right-hand side. But there's a few other things. We have the size like the right-hand side does, but now we have the hardness, and we also have this diagram right here. Let's talk about the hardness first. As you can see, I'll make my size a little bit bigger. When I actually paint, the edges are really nice and hard, and that's what it is. It's a, it's a crisp, crisp edge, and that's what the hardness is, is how the edges are. So if we come back here and we adjust the hardness, let's say to 50 now, or let's go right about 50, notice the difference. My edges are softer. And if we go down to zero, notice it looks like a spray can. And you're going to see that the middle of it is really, really uh, dark and the edges actually fade away into nothing. You can see the difference between 100% right here. We can see 50% and 0%. And those are some of the things are the first things we can do to create, make and create a different kind of brush. So let's go back and let's look at something else again. Under the same thing as we're going to look at this diagram now. This diagram, and I'm going to pick a different brush. It's a big brush like this. You're going to see my brush looks like this. You're going to see several different things when I do this around. I can rotate this, and you're going to see that my brush will rotate. Let's go take a look. Boom, there's it was at first. Let's rotate it again. And notice, oh, I just rotated it different. And let's even rotate it more. And you can see every single time I'm rotating this brush a different way. Okay? And that's how that works. Now, mind you, I'm just clicking. I can still paint this way, and it works out really, really well. That's what I like about this little triangle up top. I can rotate my brush. Let's go ahead and look at the two blues on the, on the sides, okay? And with that being those two dots are, let me get the circle brush again. You're going to see that when I squish it down, my brush squishes down too. And I can squish it down some more. And again, I can paint like this and like this. And that's how we use this diagram. Now, yes, I can rotate this also on a little angle. So look at this, I can do something like this. So that's how we're gonna be using, and those are some of the tools that are a little bit more than we have over on the right-hand side. And that's kind of the neat thing about it. But we're gonna address more things across the top up here, okay? So let me get a new brush. I'm gonna come here, get a couple of the brushes I'm looking for. And, Circle this out, and we're just going to go some general brushes. Let me grab a brush that I like to use so I can see it real easy, and we'll talk about that later. So the next thing is we have our actual modes. There are different modes if you want to use them. The ones I went over in class was just the difference I saw in the modes was between normal and dissolve. So let's take a look at normal, what it looks like at 100%. Let's make it a little bigger. I'm using the right bracket. Let's go right bracket, make it bigger. So notice. I paint like this, and that's how it is. Real simple. Boom. Okay? That's normal. Let's take a look at dissolve. You're going to see the difference. And Oh, if I zoom in on this, I'm going to do a little zooming in on this, you'll see the difference. Notice one has the speckles on it. It looks like it's actually splatter painted, while the other one has more of a consistency of a paintbrush. But that's the only difference that there is in between. Now, there's a whole bunch of different other ones. I've gone through them all. Those are the ones that are truly, what I believe are truly uh, the ones that really make a difference. You're welcome to use in your project, but you don't have to if you don't want to, okay? So let's move on a little bit more. So let's go back to normal, and let's look at our opacity. With our brush, we have the opacity. 100% opacity is when you see it pretty well, and it works really well like this, okay? Let's go back with the circle brush now. Opacity, it's 100%. Let's go ahead and change that to 50%. The opacity means how much light, let's go to 75, how much light can pass through it or the white of the, of the, of the background can show through. There's 75. Let's see what 50 looks like. And yes, I'm overlapping them on purpose 
because you can just see there's 50%. Notice I can cover 50% and 75% and I get a different color too. That's one of the things I like about opacity. You could build up color if you like to. And let's go 25. Notice, whoop, went a little wide there. But notice I can build up my color. Let's go back a little bit. Do that one again so you can see the difference. And let's go back down to almost zero and how faint it is. And yes, it is there. Watch, I can build it up. There's another one and there's another one. And I'm building it up more and more. And you can see I could build it up over other ones. But it is there, okay? But what I like about opacity is that I can build things up. And that's what I truly, truly love about it, okay? So let's go ahead and go like, we'll go 34%. And notice I can do a big one like this. And I can do another one over it like this. And I can do another one over it like this. And one more. See, I get that little thin line. I got a rough hand there. But notice, and I'm just going to use, you know, a smaller brush so I can point it out. There's 34%, there's double 34%, there's triple 34%, and there's four. Notice the nice gradient buildup, which is really cool about using your opacity, okay? So that one works out really, really well. So let's move on to our next one, okay? We're gonna look at flow. Flow is another one. Put the opacity up to 100%. Flow is depends, and, and how I want to look at this is like how much paint is on the brush, okay? And and how much paint is held by the brush. 100% is means the brush is just full of paint. So let's go ahead and get a different brush here. We'll go back to this one right here. Make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. Boop, 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 right here. Okay, 100% flow, 100% opacity. Nice looks good let's mess with that flow now let's come here let's make it like 75 percent difference and i'll show you what the difference is up here top you can see that the brush doesn't have as much uh color up here on the top and the bottom but it looks pretty consistent in between but then let's go to 50 percent. there's a few little white lines in there we'll get we'll get a little closer to it when you see it you know when we, when we do all of them here's our 50 percent notice we can start seeing white Concernable white streaks in there now. Again, because we only have 50% of the brush filled with paint rather than 100%. And then, of course, let's go down to 25. And we do something like this. And let's go take a look at all these. And you can see the difference in between what they are. So let's bring that brush back, just use it as a pointer. And you'll see 100%, the middle of it's pretty much all full. Yeah, the edges are out there because of the, the lag on the computer. I'm okay with that. Then we have some, a very few faint lines in between at 75%, and yet the top isn't as full, and then the top's even less full, and when you drag it down, there's a lot of lines coming through, and then there's our 25%. So that's the difference of it. Think of it about how much paint is on the brush. 100% of the paint's on the brush, it's going to be a nice, bold stroke. 25% of the brush, it's going to kind of be almost like a dry brush, and you're barely going to make uh, you know, any kind of color there or a very faint color, okay? So that's the one. We're going to move on to our next one, and it's going to be smoothing. Let's go ahead and get to a different brush. Let's go Control-Z, pop these out, and go Control-Z, get us again. We're going to put our flow up to 100% our flow up to 100 because we want to see it. Opacity is 100%, but we're going to mess with our smoothing, okay? And smoothing is how the computer uh, kind of creates your brush stroke. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to do side-by-side -side comparisons. Let's get this a little bit bigger. Now, I'm going to do something that goes like this, okay? Now, with smoothing, I'm going to go straight to 100% so you really see a definitive uh, change. Is going to, the computer is going to actually going to kind of read where you're going with your, your paintbrush, and it's going to smooth out the lines. As you can see, they're jagged on certain spots because that's just the human hand. That's all it is. I'm getting old. My hands are getting crazy, so that's how it goes. But the computer can help us out, and it's called smoothing. So let's put up to 100%. And what's going to happen is I'm going to do it the same way I did before or very close to it. You'll see the difference. The big catch is the computer has to create where you're going with it. So your paint is going to be laid down behind your brush. And you'll see this right when I talk about it, okay? So let's go like this. And notice how it's lagging behind. But look at how smooth this transition is compared to this transition. That's what smoothing does. It's a little slow, but the smoothing is really nice. 
and your brush smoothed really nice. Even when I did a jagged cut right here, it's still smooth in between it. If I did something like that, just without smoothing, my jagged brush, you can see how bumpy and lumpy it is. You can see where my mistakes are here and here and here. So that's one of the cool things that I really, really like about it, okay? And again, those are the three just numbers we have up on top. We're going to look at some of the other icons that we have up there, and we're going to take it from there. So let's go really quick about this one. The next icon here is called um, Airbrush, and it enables Airbrush, and it's called a build-up effect. Um, I'm going to go back to my other brush, and here's how this works, and let's make this really big. If I hold down my brush or my mouse, my left brush, you're going to see it. Oh, I have, it wasn't on there. I so apologize, people. Bear with me. We all make mistakes. If I hold it down, notice how it builds up. Because you saw the first time I click it, it's like this. If I hold and I click and I hold it down or I push down my stylus, it builds it up. And you can see it build up. Watch it one more time. It will start off like this, and then everything around it will start getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And the more I hold it, it gets to a maximum point. And you can see it's even outside of my brush. You know, it's extending beyond my the, the black of my brush, and that's how it works. And notice the longer I held it down, the more it actually did. And you can see how it is. So there's just one click. There's me clicking and holding, and there it is. It just keeps pushing to the maximum. So that's what the airbrush does for you, okay? So let's go Control-Z, get rid of those. Let's do a couple other ones here. Now, we have an actual number over here. It's got an angle. If we really want to know our angle, remember, we talked about this right here. I can rotate something here. Well, that's arbitrary. That's all by my eye. If I really want, notice I moved it, and it says 49. If I move it again, notice it says minus 42. I can type in whatever number I want to, so I have a specific angle if I need it, okay? And now the last one, or the last two, if you're using a stylus, this button is here to tell you the harder you press down on your stylus, the thicker the brush will be. The less you push, push down on your stylus, you know, on your drawing tablet, the thinner the line will be. So click that if you need it. And last but not least, this is just for fun. We have what we call, um, like just it mirrors something. We can do everything from a mandala to an actual horizontal or a vertical. So let's just do a horizontal. Drag this out. I'll just show you what it's like, okay? And what happens is I'll take a brush, come here. Let's do a smaller brush than this. And notice where I've drawn this side, mirrors on the other side. And that's all it is. Let's come here, finish this up, and kind of do something like this. And you can do all kinds of crazy things. Now notice it's got a wavy, it's got a circle, it's got a spiral, it's got all kinds of cool things. I'll let you guys play with that, but what it does is it literally mirrors, does it mirrors whatever you see there. And that's the end of this video. Let's go a little bit more in depth on our next video about brushes and creating our own brushes, okay? You guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in a bit.